continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Mia Farrow as Allison McKenzie, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington. For Alison McKenzie, the recovery from the effects of a hit-run accident have been slow and difficult. But now she has begun to remember some of the parts of her life she had forgotten. She remembers the facts. She has yet to discover their ultimate meanings. Time for true. Well, in ten minutes? It took Michelangelo at least... Twelve years, I know. I know, but my arm is beginning to ache. Did you cheat? Does it look like it? <laughs> nope. I'm getting better. You're getting braver. And I'm, um, I'm still having a little trouble figuring out what that is you're trying to paint. Oh, thank you. No, no, look carefully. It's the old seawall by the wharf. Oh. Come in. Am I interrupting anything? Yeah. No, Mr. Gehring, I asked to see Rodney. I have to talk to him. Privately? Yes, please. Okay. I'll come back in a few minutes. <laughs> hey, what's he got you doing now? Move my hand now. Listen, you'll be uh, standing on your head next. Rodney, I didn't, I didn't ask you to come just to see my parlor trick. Stella Chernick left a radio where I could hear the news. I'm glad she did. I heard about your trial. Well, they didn't want me to tell you, Allison. They, they felt that it would uh, shake you up too much. Oh, it did that. Must be pretty nerve-wracking, standing up there every day in front of the jury and all those people, huh? It is. Guess everybody in town is involved in one way or other, or concerned. Except for me, it doesn't seem right. Well, it's not your fault. I'm your friend, and I, I should be concerned. You've been sick. You can't blame yourself. I'm not sick anymore. And I'd like to help you as much as I can. Really. Did your father get you out on bail? Listen, if he hadn't, I would have broken up. I had to see you. They didn't know if you were going to live. Rodney, was I... Was I terribly upset? the day I was hurt. Do you remember why? Vaguely. I remember thinking how wrong it was that you should be locked up. You came to see me in jail. You told me you loved me. I wanted to tell you I loved you. It didn't seem fair somehow. And it seems even less fair now that I'm, I'm being tried. But I did love you. And I do love you. When you left, you were, you were crying. I ran to the window and I, I watched you walk across the square. I almost tore those bars out of the wall. I, I wanted you so much.
plate. It's all so new. There's so much to understand all at once. You don't forget a feeling. You either feel it or you don't. No, Rodney. I don't think I can come back here anymore. But that's silly. Everybody said these things take time. Time for what? You'll get well. There's no treatment in the world is going to make you love me again. Yes, I did. How'd he go? Oh, fine, fine. Look. Rod, what happened? Well, nothing. We, we talked. I, I just didn't want to wear her out, that's all. No problems, really. Hey. Come in. Okay, you want to know? Yes. She knows all the facts. But when I, I kissed her hand, she jumped. She jumped? Yeah. Look, I'm not imagining this. I could feel her wanting to run from me. Well, Rod, look, uh, you can't expect Allison to be the same, not after an experience like this. I told her I'm not coming back. Oh, well, well I guess I should have talked to you before you went to see her. It wouldn't have made any difference, Doctor. I love this girl. We spent a whole summer together. The only thing that's, that's held me together during this trial is a wild, stupid daydream that She'd be the Allison I knew. Well, without the dream, you're going to have to hold yourself together for a while. For what? Her adjustment's going to take some time. I don't have time, Doctor. I may have about three more weeks of freedom left. Now, I, I can't think about the future. I'm on trial for murder right now. Funny, it looks different somehow. You want to do the threshold act again? You don't have to. Once was enough. My pleasure. my pipe. You don't smoke a pipe. Well then, bring me my slippers. No, forget it, I haven't got any slippers. You want to bring my tennis shoes? Okay. What's going through that pretty little head now? I was just remembering the first time I came here. I was mean in those days. No. I just wanted so much to make you happy, and I didn't know how to. All I needed was you. Come here, beautiful. Let's make it. Oh, no. I have things to do. Uh. Where should I put my stuff? I'll put your stuff in there next to my stuff. This was yours and Rod's place. Now it's yours and mine. The next problem? What are you doing? I was looking for a piece of paper, but I found one. I have to make a list of things I have to buy and things to do and stuff. 
Okay, give me a piece of paper. I'm gonna make my own list. Here. When was the last time these rugs were cleaned? Not in my lifetime. How about the windows? Well, you put your finger in the desk, make a circle, and you have instant peekaboo. Would you rather I stop? No, no. Enjoy yourself. I like to watch a woman work. Hmm. What is it? I don't know what it is, but it isn't anymore. <laughs> Ooh. You didn't marry me because you loved me. You need a cleaning lady. Yes, a cleaning lady with uh, special privileges. Mm. What are you writing? I'm making a list of my own. Read yours first. List of things to be done. Clean the rugs, get new curtains, you frost the refrigerator, wash the windows, and do the laundry. Now yours. Things I will never have to do again. Wash the rug, wash the uh, windows, defrost the refrigerator. Uh, let's see. Happiness is never having to wash my shorts again. Mm -hmm. Never having to iron a shirt again. Mm -hmm. Happiness is mm -hmm. my... If you kill me, I won't give you the present I bought you. What present? It never fails. Three paces behind, please. I promised you a fire in every room. Mm -hmm. Come on, no wisecracks. That's the best of five and dime hat. fireplace.